हेलो ऑयल एंड गैस प्रोफेशनल्स वेलकम टू दिस यूट्यूब चैनल जॉइन ऑयल एंड गैस टुडे इन दिस वीडियो आई विल एक्सप्लेन यू द पार्ट्स एंड कंपोनेंट्स ऑपरेशन एंड वर्किंग प्रिंसिपल ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रिकल सबमर्सिबल पंप ईएसपी सो व्हाट इज ईएसपी ईएसपी इज एन आर्टिफिशियल लिफ्ट मेथड यूज्ड इन एनहांस्ड ऑयल रिकवरी I already covered the topic artificial lift in another video. If you haven't seen, you may refer to that. So let's start with the ESP. So ESP is basically a multi-stage centrifugal pump because this pump is submerged into the water. That's why it is called. electrical submersible pump so here in this picture you can see here is the pump that is submerged into the liquid also the motor is submerged into the water or liquid and electrical supply is supplied from the surface to the motor so each esp is divided in two set of parts and components some of them are surface components that we can see from the surface and the others are sub surface components that we cannot see from the surface so this is the surface components you can see what we have for the surface components we have a vsd variable speed drive controller to change the speed as per our requirements we have transformers we have junction box and we have the cables to connect all this equipments so this is a picture of uh, surface components showing various parts and components so now let's see the sub surface components for the sub surface we have an electrical motor to run or to drive this pump that is here then we have a protector assembly because this motor is submerged into the liquid so we we need a special protection to avoid any liquid ingress into the motor we have pump intake pump itself cables and there might be a gas separator if there is too much gas gas production we have to separate this gas from the liquid before the liquid enters into the pump so here you can see various sub surface parts and components this is an electrical motor seal section we have a rotary gas separator here and this is the centrifugal pump above that we have some other accessory components that we will discuss in later so this picture shows both the surface and sub surface components a full set of a typical esp installation so let's start with the surface components the first thing is transformer why we need the transformer we need the transformer to change the voltage as required by the electrical motor so the transformers can be step up or step down transformers and they also can be either a single phase or three phase so this is showing a bank of three phase transformers switchboard is basically a motor control device used to control this esp system a variable speed driver is used to control or to maintain the speed because the pump capacity is controlled with the speed so that's why we need to have a variable speed driver so we can change the speed as per our production requirements junction box what is the function of the junction box it have three functions the first thing is to provide a connection point between the motor control panel and to the 
elbow motor it also called vent box because it provide a means to vent any gas that may come with the cable so that this gas should not flow to the other electrical panels and there might be possibility of the explosion also it is it provides an easily accessible test point for checking the downhole equipments and parameters of course we need uh, electrical cables to connect uh, the power from the surface to the downhole electrical motor different type of power cables are available in the market so here you can see various types of uh, electrical cables available for the esp installation now let's see the well head the well head provides a pressure tight pack of around the tubing and power cable so it may include adjustable chokes and bleeding valves as required so the heart of the esp system is the centrifugal pump so here we are using a multi stage centrifugal pump what is multi stage means this pump have more than one stage so for the pump we have uh, housing we have shaft we have impeller and diffuser so here you can see impellers and diffuser how the pump centrifugal pump works so it will rotate the liquid with the high velocity that is the function of the impeller then this uh, liquid is pushed to the diffuser where all this velocity energy is converted into pressure energy so here you can see the impellers and various type of diffusers this is the diffuser outside the impeller here you can see this is impeller and below this there is a diffuser so when we talk about stage each stage consists of one impeller and one diffuser that is called one stage so this is multi stage so it have many impellers and many diffusers so there are many types of impellers available as required a radial flow impeller might be used it have vane angle at close to 90 degrees mixed flow impellers 45 degrees and axial flow impeller that pushes the liquid in the direction of parallel to the pump shaft so here you can see the function of the impeller when this impeller rotates it will rotate the liquid with high velocity and then outside this there is a diffuser this diffuser have two functions one it will convert the velocity into the pressure second it will redirect the flow to the eye of the next impeller so here you can see this is a multi stage centrifugal pump the flow discharge from one is directed to the eye of the next impeller and again same so the number of stages determines the total design head generator so if we need more head we have to add more stages to the centrifugal pump so in most esp installations the impellers are keyed to the shaft in the rotational direction that might be free to move in some cases so if the flow rate is too high it will lift the impeller to the upper side this is called up thrust and if the discharge pressure is high or the head is too high it will push this impeller downward that is called down thrust so this is a typical centrifugal pump assembly showing the 
various parts and components. Pump intake. Pump intake is used to avoid any foreign materials entering into the pump. So there are two types of intakes are available. A standard intake and if the gas to liquid ratio is high then we have to use another type. The static separator and static reverse flow gas separator. So in this separator you can see this is the mixture of liquid and gas. So because of the gas tendency it always flows upward. The liquid is forced to change its direction. When it changes its direction all the gas, most of the gas will be separated and the liquid with minimum quantity of the gas will flow to the pump suction. So there might be a rotary gas separator that will rotate with the shaft and it will separate the gas by the rotation movement of the separator. So this is a typical ESP seal protector assembly. So the main seal function is it balance the pressure between motor and valve bore. There might be pressure difference. So that is the function of the seal or protector. It acts as a motor oil reservoir and it prevents valve bore fluids entering the motor, carries thrust load of the pump, allow thermal expansion of the motor oil. So here this is the bag type or positive seal protector. Now the ESP prime mover is submersible motor. So this pump is driven by an electrical motor. The motor is normally a two pole three phase motor. It runs at the frequency of 60 hertz. So this picture shows the main parts and components of an electrical motor. Some accessory options. We might need some downhole pressure and temperature measuring equipments. The check well, drain well, cable protector and bands. So this picture shows the cable bands. We have to tie the cable with the tubing. Downhole gauges, various type of multi sensors might be installed. That is for, might be for the ESP protection, ESP system analysis, productivity analysis, or maybe that might be to analyze the reservoir conditions. So this is a multi sensor. It can measure the intake pressure, discharge pressure, intake temperature, motor temperature, flow rate, ESP vibration and cable insulation. So various type of, types of sensors are available. We can install any one of them as per our requirement. In the accessories, we might need a check valve because when the ESP is stopped, this full column is filled with the liquid. If no check valve is installed, this liquid will flow back to the reservoir and because of this backflow, it will rotate the ESP pump and motor in a reverse direction to prevent that reverse movement, check valve is used. So if check valve is not used, so we have to give sufficient time for the, this ESP system so that all the liquid is properly drained and the pump has come to stop condition. Otherwise, if the pump is rotating in the reverse direction and at the same time if we start it, there will be possibility of damage to the shaft or motor.
drain well. Now, if there is a check well, so it will hold all the liquid above this point. Now, in case if we need to remove this ESP pump, where this all the liquid will go, then definitely we have to use a drain valve here so that we can safely drain all this liquid and we can remove the pump. Backspin drain relay. In some installations, we use uh, the backspin relay so that we can protect our pump. Centralizers are used to place the equipment in the center of the well bore. So for the subsurface equipments, we might use some other accessory options, overload protection, underload or pump of protection, automatic restart after underload, current underload, unbalanced shutdown, various type of protections are available. Now let's see the common failures and troubleshooting of the ESP system. Motor overheating. So what may cause the motor to overheat? Maybe the pump is overloaded. Maybe the pump is off, well pumped off, means there is no liquid to pump. Maybe the pump is cast off. Maybe the pump is stuck. Or maybe lack of cooling. Under load problem. Why it happens? Maybe the pump is not having enough fluid level to pump the liquid. Maybe the shaft is broken, gas surge from the reservoir. Now, how to troubleshoot? Choke back means pinch the choke and give it some back pressure to reduce, uh, to have some load. Reduce the frequency and try to raise the fluid level. Overload problem. The main causes could be the mechanical restriction, increased fluid gravity or viscosity. Maybe there is some sand coming with the liquid. Maybe some scale is filled up and either the flow rate is increased. Now how the pump get gas lock? Now with this pump rotation, the stage vanes will be having high and low pressure areas as you can see here. So gas bubbles are formed here on the impeller at the low pressure areas. Then the pump will gas lock when the vein cavity is filled with gas. So in the case of gas lock what we can do choke back and raise up the fluid level. We can reduce the frequency using the VST. We can install a downhole gas separator. And lowering or deepening the well means we have to lower the well into the well bore. And a system of programmed downtime should be designed for the maximum fluid withdrawal. And the pump might be resized on the next changeover so that it can meet the requirements. Now, causes of ESP system failure, excessive overload or for the extended period of time, seal suction leak, maybe the well conditions are not favorable, bad or faulty installation, motor controller issues, faulty equipment or worn pump. Causes of pump failure. A pump may be failed due to thong, down thrust or up thrust. Maybe it is plugged or locked. Maybe have corrosion problems. So causes of ESP motor failure. <coughs> Excessive motor overload. Abnormal high specific gravity that uh, may cause the motor to fail. Bad design, worn out pump high or low unbalanced voltage, power, power fluctuations and 
that's all for today we will come with some other videos thanks for joining us see you again enjoy and bye bye